Good morning, little nerds. Get your pens and papers out because today we are going to bust hyaluronic acid because the last time I did this was two and a half years ago. P.S. I have a lisp. I have a lisp because I put a built-in retainer on my upper teeth. It is very hard to speak. And number two, who the hell am I? I'm a board-certified dermatologist. I actually do practice. I see patients every single day, Monday through Friday, in my practice in New York City, for those of you who are wondering. Because a couple of times I've had comments in the comment section, like she doesn't even see patients. I see on average 20 to 25 patients a day. So without further ado, let us jump in. Hyaluronic acid and I have some beef. Our history goes way back. Um, I started talking about it on socials back in 2018, but it's about time that we revisit this whole situation and honestly settle this once and for all. What exactly is hyaluronic acid? And if you haven't heard about it, under what rock are you living? Hyaluronic acid is the number one humectant within the beauty industry. What is a humectant? A humectant is an ingredient that allows the skin, especially the upper layers of the skin, to hold onto water and to remain nice and dewy and hydrated so that your skin can look plump and rich in moisture. That is what a humectant does. Why is it the number one humectant ingredient within the beauty industry? Money, 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 money. It has billions of dollars behind it. Billions of dollars behind it. And before we jump in to the actual science as to why I don't love it, TED Talk time. Your friend Shireen has a presence on social media. My parents still don't believe me, but it is true. I have followers on YouTube. I have followers on Instagram. I now have followers on TikTok. I also have a newsletter with over 70,000 people, as well as a physical practice in which I work from. So I have a voice. I have been approached by dozens of brands over the past several years, and I have left behind thousands, if not hundreds of thousands, and I don't wanna think if that was actually more than that, um, on the table. And that's not to say it's because I'm holier than thou. That's not to say because I'm so rich, I am not, okay? I actually am in debt to a certain extent, if you really wanna know the truth. I left behind all that money on the table because it just wasn't right. From my own experience, through my patient's experience, and through my knowledge of the science, the marketing and the messaging behind hyaluronic acid has been pushed to such an extreme that it makes it appear like your miracle ingredient, one size fits all, everybody needs it or else you're all gonna shrivel up like a prune ingredient when that is not the case at all. Now, I do not believe that brands are doing this maliciously. I just think they're riding a wave. The number one thing that people spend money on when they are in the beauty industry, when brands spend money on, is marketing and education. And educating the public is the most expensive form of marketing. And the fact that most people, nine out of 10 of the beauty consumers out there, already recognize what hyaluronic acid is, they already trust it, they already have an idea of what it does, any brand can kind of have a low lift off the ground in order to sell you their product. And that is why they come to people like me, who already have a following, to be like, here's $15,000 for something. Here's 50,000, here's 20,000, here's 4,000, here's 500. Whatever that price is, they're willing to throw money at people like me to just help spread their word because the education part is already done and they just need to have more of a reach so that more people can hear about their brand and they already trust them because they already know what that ingredient is. So that is why I have left money on the table. I have never taken a sponsorship regarding hyaluronic acid. I do not believe in it and I'd rather sleep with a clear conscience. So why do I not believe in it? It's a very interesting question. It has nothing to do with the fact that I don't think it is the best humectant out there. There are other humectants out there like glycerin that actually are far superior to hyaluronic acid. There are other ones as well, which you can watch in the video that I'm going to link below. I did a whole video on humectants. You guys can watch it below. Um, do I think hyaluronic acid is a great humectant? I actually don't. I've come across a few videos on social, not that they're the most trustworthy, right? But they did corneometer studies um, comparing different humectants to see which one actually holds on to water the most. And hyaluronic acid was the lowest of all of those humectants. And they tried to keep the environment and the person and the thing kind of stable throughout that study. So I respected their scientific approach to try and measure it. And not that corneometers are the most reproducible studies out there to measure humectant's ability to hold on to water. But the reality is, without fail, it wasn't the best. So I think there is definitely something there. My issue with hyaluronic acid goes way beyond the level of hydration that it offers. 
My issue with it is that hyaluronic acid is inherently present in our bodies. Yep, we have it in our eyes, we have it in our joints, we have it in our skin, we have it in our cartilage at a very high molecular weight. In order to allow our skin to retain moisture so we don't look like premature shriveled up prunes, for us to have nice mobility in our joints so that we're not mechanically challenged, and for us to be able to see correctly. It does a lot of good to our bodies and for that I am forever grateful. When we cut ourselves, when our tissue undergoes damage and we get a wound, that high molecular weight hyaluronic acid, guess what happens to it? It gets broken up into low molecular weight hyaluronic acid. Ding, 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 ding. You've probably heard of this one because that is one that beauty brands are very proud of. Ours is low molecular weight. We'll get to that in a second. Low molecular weight hyaluronic acid inherently within our bodies is used to attract inflammatory cells. Inflammatory cells that are gonna come into a wound to allow that wound to regenerate, heal, once and for all by causing more inflammation in that area, by bringing blood vessels in that area to fight off bacterial infections, to fight off pathogens, to fight off all of the things in the environment that we do not necessarily want or need in a fresh wound, but also to allow our skin to heal. Now that sounds lovely, but the reality is when your skin is already in a balanced state, you do not need all of that. More is actually worse. And nowhere in our body has I, have I ever found that more is better. Too much water is dangerous. Too much sun is dangerous. Too much of anything is never a good thing, especially hyaluronic acid. But that's not what the beauty industry wants you to believe. The beauty industry wants you to believe that that low molecular weight hyaluronic acid, the one that is less than 500 kilodaltons, because you nerds out there know that anything less than 500 KDAs is gonna go down into your skin in order to work its best. It's gonna hold on to moisture to make you look like a plump, juicy grape for the rest of your life. But now you know that that low molecular weight hyaluronic acid, when applied topically, and when it enters underneath the surface of the skin, has the ability to cause, unwantingly for you, a certain amount of inflammation that can appear as redness, that can appear as unwanted blemishes, potential breakouts. And although correlation does not equal causation, this has happened to me and through my clinical experience, which now is over 10 years plus in practice, I have seen countless numbers of times with my patients, especially when I have changed their skincare routine to be a routine that has very minimal HA in it. And that is where my beef with hyaluronic acid lies. Now, there are some naysayers on the internet who go, oh, that Idris, she's the hyaluronic acid you know, fighter out there, but she's a hypocrite because she has it in her practice. Well, little one, yes, I do have injectable hyaluronic acid in my practice, but injectable hyaluronic acid is very different than topical hyaluronic acid because of molecular weight. When you are injecting hyaluronic acid underneath the surface of the skin, it comes at millions of Daltons in molecular weight versus when you apply it topically, they're trying to come below 500 KDA. <laughs> Boom. Now, the other beef that I don't like hyaluronic acid is that it does structurally change the integrity of the keratin proteins on the surface of the skin, as well as the lipid barrier, allowing your skin to be more permeable in the process, which can lead to that questionable dehydration. And I think this one needs to be looked into further under various humidity factors. I think in a very dry environment, HA is not gonna be your friend, even when it is combined with the thickest of the thickest occlusive. In a more humid environment, you might actually enjoy the results. So it does vary based on where you are applying it. Not, I mean, on your face, but where in the world and under what environment you are applying it to your face. That is why personally, I have realized in the winter time, when the air gets dry and the heaters go up, it doesn't work, at least not for me, and at least not for a lot of my patients. There's a few studies that I'm gonna link below, starting with one in 2017 in a journal known as Biomaterials. They found that low molecular weight HA induced production of pro-inflammatory cytokines, all of those little cytokines that we talked about, TNF-alpha, IL-12, in macrophages. And macrophages are a type of immune cell that are the first defense line when there is a wound. And it plays a big role in inflammation. So they also found that the low molecular weight HA increased the expression of genes that are involved in inflammation. And there's several other ones as well. 
We have also had many comments from all of you guys throughout the years how when you realize that you've cut it out of your skincare routine, your skin has improved. Again, correlation does not equate to causation, but at a certain point, the numbers speak for themselves and it's a very low thing to do to try to cut it out to see if your skin does better for itself. Now, the number one rule for everyone is if your skin is happy, you keep doing what you're doing. But if your skin is red in the process, inflamed in the process, feeling drier in the process or breaking out, why not give it a try and see what happens? It's how to identify HA. A, there are several different terms you can look for starting with HA which stands for hyaluronic acid and if you haven't caught that by now let's start from the beginning we have sodium hyaluronate which is the salt form of hyaluronic acid usually the smaller molecular weight that goes in deeper and the cheaper form so a lot of brands like to throw that into their product to have that marketing claim without spending a lot of bucks um, hyaluronan is another name as well as well as hyaluronate and hylan so um, those are things you guys should look out for so I guess the biggest takeaway are number one not the best humectant on the market number two the potential to induce an inflammatory response in your skin you do not need a dedicated hyaluronic acid serum and number three the questionable whether or not is going to dehydrate your skin in the process which is a big question mark and I think has to do a lot more with the environment that you're in and what you follow it up with so without further ado, let us do a quick roundup for you guys to make your lives easier. The products I'm gonna to mention today are mostly just hydrating products with exception of Pillow Talk Derm because everything that I've made has been specifically to target a problem, okay? Um, hydration is a problem, but my products hydrate while evening out your skin tone. So for example, the Active Seal, which is my moisturizer, the Hyper Serum, which is my serum, and the mask are all glycerin-based. You will not find anything related to hyaluronic acid in these products, and I will tell you they have been beautiful adjuncts to my routine where my skin has felt plump and dewy and beautiful. In the dry winter months when it's really dry out, do I supplement it with a thicker, more occlusive product? I do. Or do I add a lighter, more hydrating serum? Sometimes I do too. But the reality is you can get a lot of hydration from your products while they're targeting a problem for you. So that is a shameless plug. They are linked below. In terms of lightest to heaviest, starting with hydrating serums, we have Coco Kind, which is a barrier serum for $22. I hate that these serums all come in a dropper. Mine comes in a pen. I will show you guys because again, I just hate. These are the click pens. They're very cool. You can lock them. No air comes in and out, whereas you're constantly reintroducing and I just do not like droppers. But this is a ceramide one, which retails for $22. It is great for a dry, climate and when paired with a moisturizer. Bioma has a cheaper one for $17. It's not that much cheaper, but it has less ceramides. It has Squall Lane. It is ultra lightweight, as you guys can see. Well, I kind of used it. I do test out these products. Um, but as you can see, it is ultra, ultra, ultra lightweight, and it is a good option for that price point. Do I think it is going to be good on its own? Probably not. Do you need to marry it with something? Probably yes. My favorite, my holy grail hydrating serum is going to be Aveeno's Calm and Restore. It is one of the best calming agents out there. I hate their dropper. I usually buy a pump top. As you can see, I finished it, and I add it to the top, so I do not need to keep opening it. It is a beautiful glycerin base based hydrating serum fortified with oats and last um, experiment has come up with a 30 percent glycerin super saturated serum i don't love it on its own at all i actually dislike it very much <laughs> it is very um as you can see tacky and sticky but is there value of potentially adding this to a basic moisturizer one that is meant just to hydrate your skin Sure, you can add a drop or two to take your hydration even further with a moisturizer. I just do not like the feel of it on my skin to be very transparent with all of you. So those are serums. Now we're gonna do gel moisturizers followed by lighter weight creams and heavier creams. For gel moisturizers, Bioma has a gel moisturizer that is an adjunct to their serum. And Avino also has a gel moisturizer that is an adjunct to their serum. Love this guy, especially for summer when you do not need a thicker cream gel creams are one of my favorites because they're the most versatile in terms of climate whether you're going from a dry climate to a humid climate 
great. If you need more, you add a thicker one. If you need less, you go lighter. And that's why Pillow Talk Germs Moisturizer is in fact a gel moisturizer, so it could be married to other moisturizers. But as you can see, um, it is a very nice lightweight gel moisturizer. In terms of lightweight creams, let's start with Ambreolis, which is a French brand that has stearic acid. It's a multi-use uh, moisturizer. It is great under makeup and usually used by makeup artists as a primer. Moving on, we have La Roche-Posay's Double Repair Face Moisturizer, which is also a lighter weight cream. Very honestly, I much prefer their SPF, which is a combination of this and sunscreen. So you get some of the ceramides and the SPF, which is a great two for one for summer. So you don't need that extra moisturizer if that's all you're trying to get out of your product. And then if we go in a little bit heavier now, Kiehl's has their ultra facial cream, which I have used in the winter time on top of my Pillow Talk Derm products as the air has gotten very dry. This is a new one. I purchase everything myself. I do not rely on samples that are just sent to me. So hold, please. I just butchered this, but I just want to show you guys. This is the moisturizer. It's heavenly when you are very dry out. So great for a dry environment, great for the winter time, great for your feet if you have very dry feet. It's a good basic moisturizer. This one retails for $67. First Aid Beauty has a colloidal oatmeal one, so it's a hybrid between the Aveeno as well as the Kiehl's, and this one is whipped in texture. It actually is much more of a slippery slip and does not feel as heavy or greasy as the Kiehl's one. So that's a nice in-between, followed by SkinCeuticals Triple Lipid Restore. I have finished this one practically. This is another very nice one to add intense hydration to your skin and to lock it all in. It is a little bit expensive. And the one thing I'll say is if you have sensitive skin, it has essential oils. So don't get too comfortable with this. And last, but certainly not least, we have Jordan Samuel, who has a moisture recovery cream at $37. It is very nice, very rich. I mean, look at that. She doesn't move. She's great. She's great for the winter, great for very dry climates. All of you in Arizona and Utah who are watching, this is what you want to get on your face ASAP. And Perito also has a nourishing hydration one um, that retails for $20 with five types of ceramides and also lighter in weight than Jordan Samuel, but still one that holds its shape and form. So there you have it. That is my roundup of glycerin-based products. On a side note, actually, there's one, two more. Um, I forgot. Cyclopast B5, I use it in the winter. It has zinc in it, so it does help to calm an inflamed barrier. And then Biafine. Biafine is not a moisturizer that I would use regularly at all. It is one that I keep for when I have wounds and cuts, and there's no hyaluronic acid in this, although you will say, but I thought hyaluronic acid can help with wounds. It could, but for whatever reason, they formulated this without HA, and it works beautifully as well. If you have a cut, a burn, or a wound, I keep this in my kitchen. And there you have it, my friends an HA free roundup of products and now you have a better understanding as to why I do not love it. Inflammation is the worst thing that you can do for your skin in the long run but everything in moderation is key. So the biggest takeaway is try to minimize how much hyaluronic acid you have in your routine. Two, you do not need a dedicated hyaluronic acid serum. And three, if you are breaking out, if your skin is constantly red, if you have blemishes on your face that never fully go away, try to stick to an HA-free skincare routine by cutting out everything and keeping it very simple and basic and slowly adding products preferably without hyaluronic acid in them, and see how your skin does over the course of four to eight weeks and let me know below. I'm Dr. Shireen Idris, and I hope you guys have a beautiful Saturday.